whether we may like it or no. Our emails are constantly creating an impression about us and also about our company. Use of certain business English phrases in your emails can make or break your image and so of your company as well. My name is Piyush Bhatia and I am the founder and CEO of BM English Speaking Institute Private Limited. With me today we have Vishal Nazaras who is a corporate soft skills trainer and also a trainer with BM English Speaking. Hi Vishal. Hi. Listeners, we welcome you to season 2 of BM English Speaking's radio channel Business English. Today is the fourth episode of season 2 which is titled 10 Business English Phrases for Impressive Emails. Vishal, lot of professionals find it difficult to start an email. Can you recommend a couple of business English phrases for that? Oh yes, opening or starting the email is the first point of contact and is an extremely important part of your email writing process. Usually, I am or my name is are common phrases that are used. However, using a phrase if you are introducing yourself for the first time, something like let me introduce myself sounds much more professional. Also, if you are replying to an email and you are saying a thank you, using the phrase like thank you for taking the time to write to us, give us feedback, etc. starts your email off on a very, very professional note. That brings me to the next question. Let's say you are explaining the objective of your email or explaining why you are writing this email. Which business English phrases would you suggest? Explaining why you are writing the email now comes to the next part. Usually, I want to tell you or I am sending this email because are phrases that are used. However, using a phrase like this email is to confirm that would be a much more appropriate way to go. Also, if you are reminding somebody of something, you would write, I am writing to remind you about, say, our meeting scheduled for tomorrow. When you write phrases like this, it sounds extremely professional. Vishal, let's say I am making a request. Which business English phrases would you suggest? Sometimes we have to request people for either information or for meetings. And phrases like, I would request you to meet me is very commonly used. However, using a more professional phrase like, I would appreciate if we could meet on Monday at 9 o'clock sends a better message. Also, in place of that, you could use, would it be possible for us to meet or have a quick chat on Monday? Oh, great. That really sounds professional. That brings me to ask you the fourth question for the fourth set of Business English phrases for impressive emails. Talking about problems and solutions is sometimes very difficult. Yes, when we talk about problems or when we send an email out for a problem, we usually say this will happen. Uh, for example, you, the IT people, you say the server will be offline for two hours. Now, yes, that is a problem. However, softening the blow to the people affected would really help. Using the phrase, what would you like us to do as the server will remain offline for two hours? That is something where you're asking them and you're, you're also telling them that the server will be offline, but you're asking them if they need you to do anything. So they have that sort of backup or a comfort level. Another way to put it is rather than just saying it will be offline, saying since the server will be offline for two hours, here's how we would like to take care of any problems that come up. So you're not only telling them a problem, you're also offering a solution. Let's say my team has received a lot of questions and some points need to be clarified. Which business English phrases can one use to ask for clarification? 
So clarification, asking for clarification is quite pertinent when it comes to not understanding a, any email that has been sent to you or any problem that has been sent. Usually we, we simply reply saying, I did not understand. Vishal, let's say my team has received a lot of questions from the client and one team member needs some clarification. What business English phrases would you suggest when asking for clarification? When asking for clarifications, we need to understand that we are sending the email back without a solution. So we need to be a little polite. We cannot say, I did not understand. Using a phrase like, could you please clarify what you meant by, that would be much better. Also, if you paraphrase, just to tell them that you've tried to understand it and ask them if you were correct in understanding. For example, if I understood you correctly, the server would be down for two hours. At BM English Speaking, we conduct email drafting courses for working professionals. Do visit our website www.bmconsultantsindia.com to know more about the online and offline courses we conduct for email drafting. Vishal, asking questions personally as well as on email is sometimes challenging. Business English for suggestions for that? Sure. Let's remove the challenge from asking questions. Usually questions are asked either for a meeting or for a reply to an email and we simply go with, can we meet? However, being a professional that you are, you must use a proper phrase. For example, when would it be convenient for you to come and meet me or for you to call me? Also, when you want to give an option, you could say, would you prefer if I came and met you? Not, can I come to your office? Oh, wow. That brings me to ask you the seven set of business English phrases to use for impressive emails. Let's say I'm ending an email with a call to action. I want the user of this email to take a certain action. Which phrases would you suggest? Right. The call to action now, like you said, where the receiver has to take the action. The two phrases that I would suggest. One, request you to please call or meet me as soon as possible. And number two, if you are interested, drop me a line and we can meet or talk. The phrase drop me a line could either mean call or reply to my email. But these two will make you sound a little more professional. That's nice. Now let's say in a working environment, you want to give some good news to your client or your employee. Phrases for that. Good news is something that we all love giving to people. And most common, we are pleased to announce or we have good news. However, repackaging this into saying, it is my pleasure to let you know, or I am glad to tell you. When you use my pleasure or I am specifically, you show that you are taking personal happiness in delivering the news, which makes the receiver very happy. Let me take you to the other side, Vishal and ask you the ninth set of business English phrases for impressive emails. Let's say I have to give a bad news. Oh, bad news is something that uh, people really do not like to give and would always pass it on to the next person. And the most common phrase, we regret to inform you or unfortunately. Starting off on a negative note, does not send a very good message. You need to be a little more considerate when you talk to people. For example, if there is a leave application that has been denied by saying, after careful consideration, we have decided not to approve your leave. So the person receiving the email understands that you've thought about it before denying the leave. Also, sometimes it's not possible for you to do something that the person or the client has asked you to do. 
rather than saying unfortunately we are unable be a little positive and say despite my best efforts it has proved impossible for me to do this for you which shows that you have actually taken the effort but it has not been possible for me so that brings me to the last set let's say i want to apologize for something apologies are always good when sent out at the right time and we apologize or i wish to apologize these need to change we need to refresh these phrases first and foremost why are you apologizing because something has gone wrong so a phrase like i regret any inconvenience caused would really go a long way with the customer because they have been inconvenienced by something also using a phrase like please accept my apologies again using the word my shows personal involvement which people really like to see you are listening to bm english speaking radio and you can download transcript of this episode as well as all our podcast from www.bmconsultantsindia.com forward slash number 14. Thank you, Vishal, for enlightening us on business English lessons. My pleasure as always. I am convinced that you listeners will use all these impressive business English phrases that Vishal has taught us in this podcast today. With that, we come to the end of the fourth episode of season two by BM English Speaking Radio Channel. You can download this entire episode from www.bmconsultantsindia.com forward slash number forty. In the next episode, which is episode number five, Vishal will help us learn ten business English phrases for meetings.